Hello, and welcome to another tip on Maximo. I'm your host, Chris Winston, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today, we'll take a quick look at basic navigation. Our focus here is going to be the Maximo 4 user who needs to quickly get in and around 7.5 for evaluation. It's also new for, good for anyone new and just want a quick overview of navigation in the application. The differences between the two versions are huge, but there are similarities that are going to be reviewed here that should ease the transition. Should you have other topic requests, please remember to send an email to media at projectech.com. The navigation differences I mentioned are, are pretty big. Uh, it's a long list. This is actually not the full list. I'm going to review a lot of these actually in the application, but there are a few slides I will show you uh, along the way. For starters, uh, we'll take a look at the Maximo 4 main menu. The module bar shown down the left, and of course when you hover over the modules you get your applications and a couple menu selections as well. Not very much. We move into the application. Uh, our module bar remains for our navigation move around and we have more menu selections. We've got toolbar buttons. We have our tabbed interface and uh, we have our individual fields and frames and areas on the screen. If we look at the plans tab, for example, as we see here, we have this sort of uh, a grid type uh, listing for operations, labor, materials, tools, and other tabs. And the one thing I would tell you you do not have available to you in 7.5 is the control T function where you could go to one of these grid type uh, sub tabs, press control T, get a list of the fields which in some cases is very long, double click on the field then you would navigate to it. That's handled differently in 7.5 and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. If we look at actions really between version 4 and version 7 in general, uh, the actions menu in version 4 was the most populous, it had the most actions, the most things that you could actually do and in version 7 the list just grew. Um, and in fact you'll have many of these of course which will cascade and give you additional options values of course changing depending on where you are uh, tab to tab and the uh, status general, and generally the status of the record you're looking at. Right click functionality which you had in version 4 for example right click on the equipment which becomes of course the asset number in 7.5 uh, you had a number of individual selections that you could do. What's this? Um, the field type help is present, but the what's this option is gone. Uh, so again, a, a minor difference. You'll still be able to get to the uh, information via Alt F1 over any field. Uh, what you see in 7i is a detail menu because the right click functionality becomes part of the function of the browser and you get browser options. So you want to choose uh, the detail menu and again I'll show you that in the application but you'll find the uh, features uh, and functions that you had available to you there are in general more. And last before we get into the application for those of you who like keyboard shortcuts in version 4. Uh, keyboard shortcuts exist in 7.5, they're just different. So when you get into Maximo, you go into the main help menu, and you can navigate to asset management and getting started, navigation, and here you have keyboard shortcuts and then they'll show you what they are. Example, save, which I believe was control S in 4, is just control alt S. So not a lot of difference, but there are differences to pay attention to. All right, let's go take a look at Maximo itself. Ah, Start Center, let's see. <laughs> and I didn't time out. So this is the new Maximo Start Center, uh, essentially replacing, replacing the uh, Maximo main menu. Of course, runs in a browser. Generally, you're looking at Internet Explorer or Firefox, although Firefox does not support direct print. The differences here is the go-to menu the module bar that you used to have access to on the left. It's the function is still here, it's just hidden until you need it. Click go to, you get your modules, you hover over module, you go to the applications and your navigation will take place. So you still have the same function, again just moved around a little bit. 
we'll go back to the Start Center and navigation via this menu bar up here, uh, or navigation bar, to get you around the application, which is generally present with you just about everywhere you are. Um, with the Start Center, you can have multiple roles, and as a consequence, you can have multiple tabs, and the tabs will be set up to display different uh, sets of data that would be made available to you. And I won't get too much into the Start Center. Uh, there are some additional videos from the Start Center that have already been done, and I'll make the link available to you uh, towards the end of this presentation. In general, you have a number of these quote unquote portlets, and they can be designed based on your overall individual requirements. The main thing is that from version 4 to version 7, you see a lot of the things that are buried in the application can be presented to you on the screen. Portlets with actual individual records, work orders, purchase orders, inventory items, uh, reports, shortcuts to creating records or shortcuts to getting into the application and, and, and even more. So you'll have this large piece of navigation you can do directly from the Start Center. Uh, in addition, in version 4, you were able to use shortcuts that would provide you with the capability to go directly to an application. Uh, in 7.5, it's a little bit different. Each user is allowed to go ahead and specify uh, their own startup application that would be embedded into their profile, and they can make the choice themselves whenever convenient and when they log in they would then go to that application as opposed to the Start Center. You can go further and embed a saved query as a default query uh, then you would go into the application and that query would run. So it is uh, transferring a lot of the control to the individual user and when they want to take it away they simply come up and remove that user default application. And next time they sign in, it will take them to the Star Center. So you're, again, more control being provided um, to the individual user. Now, as we go in and move into an application, you know, you'll have shortcuts that you can use, or of course, you can simply go to the application. Uh, once you get into the application, you'll notice that instead of having the full screen query mode that you had in version 4, you have a list tab. Looks similar to what you'd get in Control L, except there's no data. And of course, you can uh, go to Advanced Search, and Advanced Search gets you closer to that full screen query mode that you used to have, or that you have now in version 4. And some additions here. First, uh, you won't find as many fields. It won't have the whole screen, mainly due to the fact that it's actually much bigger than it was in 4. Uh, and in addition, if you have additional fields that you would like to put up here, the application designer, similar to Centura Object Nationalizer, uh, is the tool delivered with Maximo that allows you to make changes to the screen. Further, in addition to having the number of fields that are present uh, within the main tab, you also have access to sub-tabs. So say, for example, you're using Work Manager in version 4, and version 7.5, you'd be using Assignment Manager, and you'd be making assignments. So if you wanted to find work orders assigned to Baldwin in this case, put Baldwin in the Assigned Labor, hit Find, You'd find those work orders to verify the assignments. You look at the assignments tab, and somewhere on here we should find Baldwin. And there he is again. So you'll have that capability built in as opposed to having to open up the query window and write the structure query language yourself. Uh, Maximal is really geared a lot towards helping you out in using the menus to help you write your individual queries. We'll pop back to advanced search for just a moment. You may have a number of things that you've put in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click restore application defaults, which will then clear out everything and put in my defaults. Similar to define filter, 
where I would say history no is task no and is task is new because the operational or task steps that you had in version 4 are actual work order records in version 7 and as a consequence this function of saying is task equal no returns you to essentially the same type of search you would do in version 4 which is to bring up your primary work orders and then from there as you select the work order you'd be able to see the individual tasks uh, in this case also we have a couple other things uh, our default site in this case Bedford uh, because the database is allowing you to have multiple sites and even multiple organizations within the same instance as opposed to you having to have different instances of Maximo floating around either as individual databases, individual schemas, however you'd like to approach it or are approaching it now. And different classes of records and the default essentially work order activity, activity being tasks, uh, those things will be set up and built in for you. An additional feature, um, another additional feature, is the ability to search a location hierarchy. So our traditional search, for example, for boiler finds things assigned to the boiler. Um, we go to advanced search 16 and we move this to search location hierarchy and we see just a little bit more so 16 to 207 because we are now looking at the hierarchy search and this is all done based on navigation through the advanced search as opposed to writing the structured query language which is available to you here and if you are comfortable in writing such language feel free but uh, for those of us who are not uh, or not totally comfortable with it, I would recommend you leverage the advanced search feature uh, as built into the application that will uh, do a lot of the work for you. One other thing I'll show here on the uh, advanced search, again you have several other things that you can put here and others you can add. The last thing I want to talk about though is the, the dates. Uh, when you need to search for a date range you could put a date into a field, go edit the query, and then write off the syntax yourself. Now, when you want to specify individual dates, you simply enter whichever field you want, a from date, a to date, and find the work orders. And if the date field you're looking for, as work orders have, oh, what do work orders have, 10, 11 dates on them? just the main tab. Uh, if that's that particular field, let's say for example actual finished, you want to search for actual finish date, it's not here. Your administrator can add it here and provide you with the same capabilities. It's just a matter of making sure they're aware of it. Alright, so saved queries. Speaking of saved queries, uh, in the past saved queries were a little bit troublesome to navigate to. You had to actually go to the menu bar and navigate into the list of queries and then find your query and run it. Now you have a drop down which will simply track down, for example, open work where I am the lead person. And the syntax, of course, picks up the fact that I'm the one that's logged in, but the actual syntax of the saved query uses substitution variables. So let's see, open work where I am lead is here, and it actually traps who's logged in and translates that into an individual value to find the records for that individual user. So a single query that allows you to uh, leverage that, build it as one query for all people to use. In addition, queries saved in an application can be utilized and displayed on the Start Center and then you can filter those records and bring them up to the Start Center in the first place. You can also display them in graphical view and I'm going back to Start Center again aren't I? Alright, let's get back to work order tracking and we'll go back to our advanced search 
and I think work order 1001 was the one I used and it's actually closed in this database so I need to turn our history flag to yes or I could just get rid of it and we'll hit find and track it down there's our work order and you'll notice things are a little hard to see here because there's just so many fields I don't want to make it too small because then it it just isn't going to be readable. But you'll have uh, essentially the fields you had before and a great deal more. On the Plans tab, as I mentioned before, the Control-T navigation is not present. So to see the other fields that would normally be off to the right, you have uh, this View Details button. You click on it and then the additional fields are exposed below keeping you inside the same window left to right so there's no left right navigation but you may need to scroll down depending on the level of detail that's present for tasks you get quite a bit of detail labor not as much and then of course you have the same things in materials services and tools just no materials in this particular work or case so you are still able to navigate uh, to find the things you had found before you just navigate differently. Uh, child, child work orders are going to be available to you as well, again here on the plans tab as well as in the actuals. Your select actions, again available uh, from the select action menu. And differences of course when you're on a list tab you have fewer actions that are available to you. Um, back to the work order uh, the last thing I want to really look at is the, here, the detail menu. Again, right click is gone, so you'll see the chevrons, you hover, you get the tool tips as detail menu, and from there you have a number of things that are available to you. Uh, select a value for a list, open the drill down, that goes ahead and allows you to take a look um, at the different systems that you may have, and the different hierarchies that may be present, uh, showing the path to the top. So. Uh, effectively, the drill down you have uh, in version 4 and a great deal more. Uh, in addition to that, you can here go to work details, for example, for this location, and you're actually able to see what else is assigned to that location work orders, PMs, routes, collections. You, you have, again, a, a great deal more capability in this version. Uh, via the detail menu which is essentially the replacement for uh, the right click functionality. The exception to that of course is field help where you would choose what's this and that would not be available to you so in this case I'm actually going to show you a keyboard shortcut which you can't see but take my word for it I'm actually pressing Alt and F1 and I get essentially the same thing I got in version 4 uh, table and column name the field label and then a description. So you should be able with your version 4 knowledge view this video really get a better handle on and quickly get into version 7.5 and and move around. And let's see, let's get us back if I can. There we go. Uh, yeah, demonstration. It's all done demonstration. So Again, navigation differences are pretty big between the two versions. Uh, one thing I had mentioned, I've included here a hyperlink to uh, Start Center videos, which will take you much deeper into the individual portlets. There's, in, there's even a reportless portlet where you can actually take a report, pop it onto the Start Center, and then people will get to it in the Start Center. They can run it from the Start Center. They don't have to actually navigate to the application thing to keep in mind of course is that report must have parameters embedded or at least uh, prompts that will allow someone to enter so you don't end up printing every record possible for that particular report and with that yeah I think that's about it so uh, again thanks for attending for viewing this video and just as a reminder uh, should you have any other topic requests, please send us an email, media at projectech.com. Thank you.